Proximity Problems in System Design Interviews Welcome to showoffer.io, where we break down complex system design concepts into digestible discussions to help you ace your interviews and sharpen your engineering skills. If you found this useful or plan to conduct mock interviews for system design questions, behavior questions, or other interview questions, please follow our website www.showoffer.io and this YouTube channel. I'm Tony, and today we're diving into a critical module in system design interviews, proximity systems. Proximity-based services are everywhere. For example, local business discovery apps like Yelp, ride-sharing apps like Uber and Lyft, food delivery services like DoorDash, navigation tools like Google Maps, and even dating apps like Tinder. But how do these systems efficiently determine what's nearby while handling millions of real-time location updates? That's what we'll explore today. Let's get down to the core idea of proximity systems. At its core, a proximity system solves two fundamental challenges. First challenge, the system is able to efficiently identify nearby entities, whether that's people, businesses, or locations, within a specified geographic boundary. The other challenge is that the system should be able to manage and process real-time location updates at scale. To tackle these challenges, engineers rely on several core technologies, which we'll break down in this episode. We'll also discuss practical trade-offs that come up in real-world system design decisions. Before we get into the technical components, let's understand a core concept, geopoint. A geopoint consists of two coordinates, latitude, meaning how far north or south a location is from the equator. Longitude, meaning how far east or west it is from the prime meridian. Every point on Earth has a unique latitude and longitude, which serves as the foundation for location-based services. But storing and searching through millions of geopoints efficiently requires specialized data structures. With the geopoint, we can get to the spatial data structures to persist and process them. The top two widely used are QuadTree and GeoHash. QuadTree. A QuadTree is a spatial data structure that recursively partitions two-dimensional space into four equal quadrants. Each internal node has four children, representing northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast regions. The division process continues until each leaf node contains no more than a predefined number of points. The key advantages of QuadTree are it is highly memory efficient for non-uniform data distribution. For example, if you think about dense urban centers like downtown Manhattan, which needs high-density spatial annotations with recursion levels of nodes comparing to rural areas without any business in tens of miles. Secondly, QuadTree excels at spatial relationship queries. QuadTree comes up with containment or intersection relationship to adjacent locations. QuadTree is efficient for complex geometric queries. If you try to find a point within an irregular polygons, QuadTree is a good choice to pick. The trade-off of QuadTree is that it requires rebalancing operations when adding or removing points, which can impact performance in highly dynamic scenarios. GeoHash. GeoHash is a hierarchical spatial data structure that encodes geographic coordinates into alphanumeric strings. It creates a grid system where longer strings represent smaller, more precise areas. Each additional character in the hash divides the previous cell into 32 subcells, increasing precision. For example, 9Q9 approximately represent the San Francisco area and 9Q9HVU pinpoints a specific location within San Francisco with same three-character prefix but another three-character precision. The key advantages of GeoHash are 1. It is optimal for real-time location updates due to simple encoding and decoding. Seen from the example above, it provides the encoding method from 2D matrix to 1D string. Second, GeoHash is efficient for proximity searches using prefix matching. Thanks to the advantages in prefix setup and encoding, the proximity search can make the best use of it. 3. GeoHash is easy to shard and partition data by prefix. Similar partitions usually fall into the same prefix and easy to separate. 4. Excellent for write-heavy workloads. This is compared to QuadTree, which may require rebalance on writes. 5. 
Easy to cache popular regions. Using the string type in Redis is more primitive than complex structures like tree nodes. There are many advantages for GeoHash, but what are the main concerns? There are two to be mentioned. One, it will be tricky in handling edge cases on grid boundaries. Suppose there are two very close points can have very different GeoHash prefixes, though the likelihood is not high. Two, it is not performing straightforward to circular search. This is because geohash cells are rectangular, but most fine nearby queries want results within a radius, say one mile around my current position. Which one to use? The choice between quad tree and geohash typically depends on your specific use case. Quad trees excel at complex spatial queries and handling uneven distribution, while GeoHash is preferred for real-time updates and simple proximity searches. In a system design interview, it's unlikely that your interviewer would ask you to implement either Quad Tree or GeoHash. So focus on understanding these trade-offs rather than implementation details and knowing when to use what. To build a proximity system, you need more than just indexing techniques. Here are the five potential building blocks you may need. First, geocoding services which converts user-friendly addresses, like 123 Main Street, into geo-coordinates. For example, popular geocoding services like Google Geocoding API, Mapbox, Amazon Location Service, etc. Why is this needed? When doing location-based search, users are unlikely to provide or search by coordinates, such as latitude is 37.7749 north, and longitude is 122.4194 east. What's more likely to happen is searching by an address such as to find all Thai restaurants within one mile of my current location, or on Mission Street, etc. So the backend needs to translate a user-provided location to a GeoPoint first, and then do processing and database query using GeoPoint. Second, SQL database, usually Postgres plus PostGIS extension. PostGIS extends PostgreSQL with geographic objects and functions which supports complex spatial queries, geometric operations, and indexing. For example, it can be used to store static delivery zones, service areas, or other complex geo-boundaries. Third, NoSQL database, say MangoDB. MangoDB has native support for GeoJSON format and two dSphere indexes, and it's good for simple proximity queries and high write throughputs. For example, it can persist user location data. You may also need to think about in-memory stacks, such as Redis. Redis supports geospatial indexing through GeoADD and GeoRadius commands. Redis uses a 52-bit GeoHash implementation, which can support extremely fast for simple radius queries. The real example is that it enables real-time proximity search and cache frequent location queries. Lastly, you may also need Elasticsearch plus Geo support. Elasticsearch supports multiple approaches. GeoPoint, GeoShape, which is efficient for large-scale text search combined with location filtering. It also provides flexible scoring based on distance and it best for location combining with full text search with proximity. You may come up with the question, which building block to select? Here's our recommendations. First of all, the input query patterns. Simple radius searches work well with Redis or MongoDB, while complex spatial operations benefit from PostGIS. If it relates to full text search, you may consider Elasticsearch. Secondly, scalability requirements. High write throughput favors MongoDB and Redis. Complex queries at scale fit Elasticsearch. If you track it to have accurate spatial analysis, you may consider PostGIS. Lastly, consistency requirement. Real-time updates are best handled by Redis, while PostgreSQL or PostGIS ensures ACID compliance. If your system targets on eventually consistent, MangoDB or Elasticsearch are both good choices. To recap, proximity-based systems are an essential part of modern applications, and designing them requires understanding how to index and search geodata efficiently, the trade-offs between QuadTree and GeoHash. The right databases and geospatial building blocks for different use cases. In the next episode, we will show you with an end-to-end -end system design for Yelp 
as one of the top hit system design interview questions in Proximity System. That's it for today's episode. If you found this useful, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. For more system design deep dives, visit us at www.showoffer.io. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.